I was sad that I missed you when you came up to Aberdeen, but wasn't it the, wasn't it the, no, the cat, Marimba, wasn't it? Yes, the, yeah, the mallet cat. Yeah, right. yeah. Mallet cat, yeah. yeah. That I'm guessing that for, for me, although I've not heard the piece, that that's about using instrumental world of triggering, uh, tri but triggering electronic sounds yeah. through an instrumental um, yeah. process. Yeah it, yeah, it was, it was this, uh, it was, it was about taking a sound um, uh, and uh, shaping it, but also then adding a level, another level of shaping, using yeah. the, um, using the mallet cap. Um, yeah. yeah. And the, the 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 sound that I used for it was a um, was was a was really just a recording of a of a of a piano harmonic. Um, right. You know, if you of put by putting your finger on a node. Yeah. On the, yeah. And then just recording. And then whacking it, it with yeah. the pedal down. Um, yeah. So I I I'd, I'd, I'd recorded. Uh, various um, samples of these harmonics, some more or less harmonic, some in harmonic, and some really just completely noisy, depending on where you put your finger. Uh, yeah. And and in the and the thing is that I found those more interesting than the ones which were pure harmonics um, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, for various mm -hmm. reasons. Um, but um, it 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 was a sort of exploration of that sound that I did with the with the mallet cat. Um, but I didn't, you know, I realized that this was what I was doing after the fact, because uh, when I was when I was writing the piece, there were sort of practicalities of getting this thing to work or getting the yeah. piece to work in these terms. And originally the piece was, uh, I'd, I'd done the piece almost like an abstraction in terms of what you can do with MIDI and yeah. this yeah. You know, sort of abstract harmonic material. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then when I tried out the piece myself on a keyboard, I thought, well, this is, this is, this is like a technical exercise. Yeah. Um, it's not. It's not really. It hasn't got the kind of um, drama or the uh, sense of expressivity that you would get if I was writing a piece purely for for an instrument. Right. Yeah. Um, and it was at that point when I was just going through various samples that I had, you know, recordings that I had. Uh, I, I I tried out this piano sample that I'd had for probably about six years after I'd recorded it and hadn't yeah. done anything with because originally I'd used I'd recorded them for a piece I'd planned uh, for piano and live electronics but I'd never yeah. completed the piece um, mm. so it was that point when I started playing around with it literally just um, playing uh, just just trying various things out um, I think it was on Ableton um, yeah uh, that I suddenly realized that you know, I was um, what I was doing was looking at this from a from much more from a, a electroacoustic point of view, and yeah, that was yeah. that was liberating. Because suddenly, yes. I, I, suddenly all this other stuff, you know, all, all this other stuff about harmonies doing this or yeah. uh, of of how long you know of, of a particular rhythmic pattern and all that stuff. That it's not that they became irrelevant, but they just became tools, a means yeah. of shaping or or, or doing something. Um, you know, meaningful with these sounds, really, you know, get trying to get into the sound itself. ago I did a piece um, um, actually I did a couple of pieces with her but this, uh, the last piece I did was a piece with visual artists where it's a piece with Jane Chapman yeah and she did um, uh, she had a project uh, where she did some pieces with collaborators yeah. so this was a, a piece I was working on this piece um, with um, live electronics harpsichord but also try, um, uh, this um, friend of mine, John Barraclough, the visual artist I was telling you about, who lives in Yorkshire. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and so the idea was to get um, um, a live drawing interacting with, this, with the processing sound, with um, acting on the sound of the harpsichords, so processing that via, you know, via, via, uh, via a computer. Yeah. Um, and wow. it, was quite, it was a sort of experimental uh, thing, really, just to find ways in which um, 
uh, really was trying to find a, sort of a, a kind of aesthetic connection between perform the live performance and the business and of, the live, of live so drawing. Can I was was the live drawing was the sonification involved there then how were you how were you translating the drawing into into the sound then well that was the thing i mean the connection because we did various we, we looked at various things of mapping but yeah. the problem with that was well not the problem but uh, one of the things was that 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 was that was so rich um that uh, it it was um um, it, it it wouldn't it wouldn't it, it was difficult to get that to work with um, with the harpsichords, for example. Yeah. You could you could do parameters for things like live uh, additive synthesis or subtractive synthesis or um, certain. Well, the thing is, if you tried it when we when if you tried with things like AM and FM, you yeah. there's there's only so much you can do because the moment you move beyond a certain mm -hmm. certain limit, you get you know it's like the it's like the entire universe is going to collapse in and of itself. Yeah the kind of output you get yeah. um so we the, the the way we did uh uh we worked with it the performance was to was to use um uh i mean this is quite uh compared with what's possible now it was quite primitive which is we used um contact mics on the yeah. on the drawing surface yeah. at various points so and what would that would pick up was the contact between the the pencil or the, the drawing uh. instrument uh, yeah, so it, yeah. it would, and I think John at the time was using a particular grade of paper, which would, um, um, you know, give it was textured. So textured, so yes, would, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like that, that that information um, was just used as a kind of a, a of uh, um, as a means of generating an envelope. Yeah. So once you've got the envelope, you can then apply it to. Okay, you know, that's interesting. Load. There you go. Is it, yeah. It's it's I, I was kind of I'm kind of slightly interested in that whole sonification thing, but at the end of the day, I'm more interested in the sound that uh, that a pencil, uh, the real sound of a pencil on textured yeah. paper with a contact mic on it, because that's a true recording of something that you can then work with. No, yeah. this this is this is the thing that I found interesting with uh, getting to this point was because that was the, exactly the kind of thing that John was interested in because he came from he comes from a um, virtually from a, from a pure visual arts background yeah. fine art background and so what interested him was the was the um um uh, was was the kind of mark that a pencil would make for example but also um the 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 sort of gestures and what you could do with things like projection and lighting in terms yeah. of manipulating the sound um yeah. and then another thing that I'd, uh, he, uh, I'd worked on him um, before we got to this project. Was that uh, he, he, he did a film uh, for another piece I did for Jane, which was called "Breath Across Autumnal Ground," and that was a pre-existing piece. And yeah. he, he developed a piece, a, a visual, um, um, well, um, a, a set of visuals which could, in in theory, be performed live. Right. Because what they what they involved was a, was a sort of uh, almost like a um, a shadow play or a a, 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 um, um, a live show, but using found objects of various kinds. So these found objects were lit against um, on a trestle, and they were filmed right. from above. Mm. Um, and he got some amazing results. Uh, you know, things using um, um, using uh, fabrics uh, distressed. Uh, bits of distressed metal or distressed objects, leaves, quite a few leaves, yeah. um, and it was it was incredible. It was almost like watching live animation happening, That's but as a, almost as a shadow play. Yeah. Um, and that you know that the, the the discussion we had at that point was that of of well for me it was returning to something that I hadn't really thought about for quite a long time, which was uh, you know the work that. Um, I remember uh, well the work that you um, and Alistair and Nick and yeah, Andy yeah. were doing with Jonty back in, in the days in the, uh, in the studios. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. It, it working, working with recorded with, sound and yeah, yeah, mm, yeah sound objects, found objects, found sound objects. Um, yes, absolutely, yeah. And um, yeah. and it and that it was an interesting thing because it was it was this conversation with John and the way he was working with visuals, which got me thinking about um, about uh, about that end that that side of things, which I hadn't really consciously you know um uh, well i mean i hadn't really consciously addressed at the time because i think at, at that point my interests were very much in the kind of an instrumental vocal 
writing rather than the yeah. um, than the ac acousmatic electroacoustic yeah. end of things. Um, I mean, I, I did a couple of things which in yeah, I remember you did. Like you were that. kind of uh, you were encouraged to. Dabble I was encouraged, yes. <laughs> um, and um, and I think in it, it was it was it was this it was it was very it was this experience of of seeing the visuals in action and what John was doing, and mm -hmm. which made me think back to what what I what what uh, um, you know what what all what you and the other composers had been yeah. doing in the studios and you know particularly Jonty's work as well. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. And it was sort of there was I experienced this kind of perspective shift of suddenly something of seeing something in a in a different light or in in relation to to what I was doing. So it wasn't for me it wasn't discovery, but it was it was this it was a kind of aha mo moment. A, a re uh, yeah a rediscovery yeah a rediscovery yeah, yeah. and. Um, uh, so from that point on, um, the piece and the thing was the, the pieces I've been writing uh, um, around that time um, had all involved, you know, live electronics in some way. So there was a, there was a, you know, there was a sort of, I was living in an electroacoustic world, but I was, yeah. it was one which I'd been viewing pretty much from from a from a particular perspective, which is of the instrumental performance and yeah, uh, that's the right. kind, of, kind of the abstractions that go with that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I suddenly experienced this complete shift around, um, and there was a uh, and some of the, the the pieces that I did a couple of years ago. Um, I've moved more and more to working with, um, uh, well, treating the instruments almost like they are sound found sound objects. Uh, at a concert at Birmingham, at yeah. the, um, I think it was at the, the, the Symphony Hall Center, the rehearsal. That's right, the CBSO Center. CBSO yeah. Center, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was a, I think it was that concert which there was a, uh, it was a, <laughs> it was an interesting, it was a concert of two halves, if I remember. There yeah. was the first half, which was very much the, um, um, that current generation yeah. of composers yeah. at, at, uh, at Birmingham. Yeah. Um, where, uh, and there were some fantastic pieces coming out uh, somewhere, but then suddenly there was a flip to people, uh, you know, of our generation of composers. And uh, there was a piece by um, Alistair, Andy yeah. Lewis, and then you did your, uh, you did um, Saint Rendezvous. Um, and there was a sudden amazing change. It was almost like you were in a completely different studio because the, yeah. the, the sound, the sound, the nature of the sound just suddenly transformed. Um, and um, uh, so suddenly you were you were hearing stuff and uh, which was uh, where, where there was a wide dynamic range, um, high levels, um, whereas previously things were very you know very beautiful and delicate. I mean they, they were they, yeah. they were strong, but it didn't yeah. have this um, it, it, these particular gestures and textures that um, uh, that uh, you know the second half uh, contained. And I remember That's hearing I remember this piece that you did um, and. Um, I was absolutely gripped by it at the time, and I hadn't had, I hadn't, I hadn't really heard, have not heard it since then, um, until a couple of weeks ago when I got hold of the CD, and uh, yeah. so I've been enjoying listening to it. I mean, oh, it's fantastic. really magical. Do, do you know what that gig might have been the twentieth anniversary of Beast? Yes, and I think yeah. Yeah. what they did was familiar. to get some old farts back. <laughs> and 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 get this sort of current beast. Yeah. And so the old farts in the second half, me and Andy and Alistair, that you know what it makes me think about is is it an approach to materials that is around having been brought up using tape recorders? Yeah. Uh, yes. And and actually then using computers. Yeah. I, I I use Reaper as if it's a bank of real to real tape recorders and and I've always used a door in that way because that's where I come from whereas the young kids they they unless they have a go at being retro they don't know about all of that and no. I I used to teach I used to have a 
a, a little in the middle with uh, of the of the um, of the the twelve week class. I'd, I'd have a bit of a break by bringing in a tape recorder, a splicing block, uh, and we 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 bugger about like it was like in the old days. And they absolutely loved it. And yeah. they say they say things like, oh, "So that's where cut and paste comes from, then?" And you think, <laughs> "Yeah, <laughs> yeah." <laughs> Of course, uh, but because they're in this world where uh, even the language, they don't fully know what the language is that they're doing, but they just, it's, it's a mouse movement. It, it, and, and so that gesture yeah. of the mouse movement is totally different from the gesture of, uh, of moving faders up and down um, to control the volume of a sound, um, which yes, you can still with controllers, but the physicality of composing yeah. music concrete is a really important thing, I think. Yeah, the, this that, is that, something that, I never forget. That physicality is, is, is really important. Um, Mike, Mike Vaughan talked a lot about that in a paper he wrote ages ago about the tactile uh, aspects of working um, in a studio, which I, I found really interesting. Um, but yeah, it's, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Well, thanks for that. game changer for me because the thing about it is it, it goes from field recordings into acousmatic episode back into field recording acousmatic episode yeah. field recording yeah. and this this kind of this this has developed now this is this is how I do things and John T and I are in the middle of writing an album um, and we're calling it an album because it's gonna be like a prog rock album so uh, all the tracks are going to be six or seven minutes long. Um, and we're trying to keep it to a smaller form than it would normally be, you know, not the 12 to 15 minute acousmatic thing. Um, but where each, each of the pieces is derived from a single field recording that we've got. So, um, so I, I did one, which was a recording that I made in uh, Clermont Ferrand during the first weekend of the Gilets Jaunes riots, uh, not riots, demonstrations as they were then. Is that, is that the, I think I've heard um, um, a piece of yours based around that. Is that a piece based on traffic sounds and um, the sounds of car horns? That was like, yeah, it was on the new music show last week. Um, uh -huh. They broadcast it on Saturday night. Yeah, that's, it's called Clermont Horns and that's it. But it starts off with the field recording, the car horns, but then I, I take the car horns off and yeah. you use the, you know, it, basically it's it's a kind of A major minor chord uh, when you've got all of these car horns. So I kind of smear them and play around with the pitches and and off we go over there. And then we come yeah. back into the middle of the all these car horns honking and then loads of other things. But it's this thing about moving from one part of the brain's listening to, to a, a field recording where you are identifying the scene and then you move off into this acousmatic episode where you're not able to, you're in another part of the brain because you can't decode it in the same way because you've not got the experience of the acousmatic world. And that kind of, that that's become a thing for me actually of, of doing that, which, and the term scenes, that's why I call it Seine rendezvous. It's a pun on the word, on the river Seine, because oh, yeah. it's all in Paris, yes. but it's, yeah, it's Seine as in scenes. But, yeah, <laughs> oh, I'm glad you like it. Um, I mean, both the, the, the feels of silence and um, yeah. still voices. I mean, terrific yeah. pieces. Um, um, is it that was still a cool voices project. That, still voices is the, um, is the one based on the distillery sounds, isn't That's it? That's it, yeah. That was yeah. a very cool project to do. Yeah, yeah. it has a really yeah. beautiful moment at the, uh, uh, when, when, you, um, when you, you do something really, uh, well, Chopin-esque. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm going to be, uh, um, you know, 
um, I saw you're the, flash you're the about first it. person to your first person to compare me to Chopin, but I'm looking forward to this. Which bit? No, no, no. You're, I, I think I think I think your stuff is really classical, you know, uh, in a, and, uh, um, or, or well, classical romantics, definitely. I mean, there was a there's a moment at the uh, toward uh, in that I think it's that piece where the, there's a there's a beautiful section of uh, what sounds like granulation or AM yeah. sounds chopped up. Uh, yeah. And it sounds like it. It it, it sounds like um, it's um, it, it's it it's uh, it, it sounds uh, like um, uh, um, you know like a kind of uh, nod towards uh, dance music, but it's not. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's very periodic, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's but it's got it's got this really beautiful shape to it, and uh, then uh, and then as you as you come out of the uh, the the, um, the electroacoustic world into the um, into the anecdotal world or into the real sound. You suddenly realize what it is. It's the sound of a met of metal scraping of of uh, somebody it. scraping out the of the coal fire. Um, the uh, the, the, the kills. Yeah, and, and, and yeah. that's become that's become really important to me actually. So, so I'm glad you identify that this kind of reveal. So you're yeah. playing around with something, thing, and you're behind that acousmatic veil, and the listeners thinking, well, it sounds a bit like this. It could be that, yeah. or it's a bit like this. And I like to do that. I like to bring. The listener as close as possible to the veil, yeah, and then push, no, pull, I think, pull the veil out of the way, and they go, ah, shit, that was it, that was it, right? Oh, okay, yeah. No, I and think it's kind of like this. Yeah. yeah, the reveal is important. Both the Saint Rendezvous piece is really about uh, is, is 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 a um, um, you know it, it it's a great piece about Paris, a journey through yeah. Paris. Yeah. Um, and I, the, the that whole place thing is really important, and and in fact that one of my our ref impact case study, one of the two, is about my work uh, about sound and place, and particularly around Aberdeen, because I I've got these five things that I'm putting through as a double weighted um, submission. Uh, one is a, an iPhone app. Um, there's a sound walk, a sound map, uh, an eight channel piece uh, and music for a photography exhibition. Um, so the panel's going to love it and they're going to hate it because they have to download an app <laughs> on their phone to actually see the research. But it's all about different ways of approaching the sound of a place. So the app is about uh, walking around Aberdeen uh, and looking at photographs and listening to recordings of a location that you're standing in. And then you can take a photograph and make your own recording of that place. And you can build up uh, over time images and recordings that, that of, of the same location, um, but have, have changed. So, because I mean, I, I, that's what the Still Voices piece was about. Um, all of the all of the sounds that, that or most of the sounds that were used in that piece, you cannot hear anymore because it was about disappearing sounds so it's the last coal-fired distillery in Scotland and so they don't have the kilns anymore so um, you know that it's a kind of notion of preservation and, and that but associated with a particular place and therefore that comes into you know issues of identity um, and and memory uh, which become really important um, you know I, an, an interesting sort of anecdote about the, the, the whiskey piece, Still Voices, was I, I actually managed to go back and do a gig where I performed that piece in the distillery. Um, so they got a visitor centre yeah. uh, and they invited back, it's really moving, they invited back some of the people who used to work in the distillery who took the opportunity to take early retirement when they, they was closed for six months when they changed over from this coal-fired to to essentially a, um, a, a, a it's like a kettle element in the bottom of the still now instead of heating from underneath um, and they they invited them back to the gig and I, I did a little installation in the still room so I put some loudspeakers behind the stills and I was playing back the sounds of the kiln doors opening and closing 
um, and all of the sounds that were associated previously. And the guys, I was in a really interesting conversation. One of them were kind of tears in his eyes talking about how the sound that, you know, I'd brought back the spirit of the place for them because it was a big industrial thing and they were in a place that had a particular sound and yeah. they actually didn't really want to be in a place that just had the sound of a of a computer, you know, a hard drive. That was really the only sound in there um, yeah. and it had gone really, really quiet. So this notion of preserving and bringing back, they found they found very moving. It was, uh, it was really interesting. The, the, the okay. other the, your, the, your piece resound also does um, yeah. is, is that the, that that's the one that's based on stories of sound. Yeah, so that's the interviews. So those three pieces: feels of silence, um, still voices, and re resound. Yeah. Resound. I don't know how to pronounce it myself. They're all part of the Gordon soundscape, and there's a sound map that goes with it, which have got all these preserved sounds uh, on them. Um, and that that was some amazing interviews with people. And we were deliberately, I interviewed them in places that didn't exist anymore. And they're talking about the places uh, that, that, you know, and they're talking about the sounds from those places. So the, the, the really good one is the guy in the, uh, in the auction mart, um, Melvin Dalgano is his name. And he was talking about the sounds. So we were standing in the auction mart where he used to do the auctioneering about 20 years previously. And it's now a visitor center. Uh, and, and he was, finding it really hard to describe the sounds of the of the animals. Um, and so he kept resorting to kind of grunts and uh, onomatopoeia sounds. And, and he was kind of scraping his feet on the ground like he was a big cow uh, and, and stuff <laughs> like that, which was just fantastic. But I couldn't have done that if I'd interviewed him in his own home. He'd have been sitting in a chair just telling, talking about it. But when I put him in the place where he did it, it kind of, he, you know, it, it just took him back to that particular place, which was all about sound for him. Which is amazing. There, yeah. the weird, and then the guy at the other side, he opens the gate to let them in. So you have that noise going on perpetually as long as the stock is being fed into the ceiling. Then you have the exit gate there, you see? The sounds are all going on. The sound of the auction was taking place when it's on. And then when it's passed and gone, silence. Interesting. I think the other piece of yours I also liked, um, and I was I was I was trying to spot the sound in it, which was the um, the Delia Derbyshire piece. Oh yeah. <laughs> so have a so. I, I think I think the sonic screwdriver sound is used all the way through. It's 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 sort of in there. It's sort of in there. I got access to a bunch of samples because it was part of a bigger project. Me and Alistair, Pippa Murphy, um, ooh, uh, Zoe Irvine from Dundee, and someone else, and we were commissioned. So as a play was written about the um, about the radiophonic um, studio. Uh, and they wanted um, to show the play. And then afterwards, they wanted this kind of, you go get a drink and you come back and listen to these pieces of music that have been composed. Um, and I had a lot of fun uh, doing it because I got, I, I could use bits of Delia's uh, music. Um, and so it's full of all that kind of stuff. Uh, and Sonic Screwdriver is one of them. So it's kind of, yeah, it's, it's in there. Uh, but it was just amazing to have access to this, to this stuff and to see, you know how it, how it all works is incredible yeah it's a piece i haven't done very much actually that one the title's too long <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was also thinking back to um the sort of relationship um with technology as well which was yeah. how these how the, these things have changed over the years. Um, yeah. You know, for example, I mean, we all use computers now to do our, um, you know, whether we're doing an imitation of a reel-to-reel -reel, um, setup yeah. or uh, we're doing something, you know, sound processing or whatever, or even, uh, you know, real-time processing. But, um, you know, there was, there, was, there was a time when if you wanted to time stretch a small sound of about three seconds, you had to set it going and go and have a cup of coffee and probably yeah. a bacon sarnie. 
yeah. and then come back and find it had crashed because you hadn't yeah. filled in the correct parameter field with a yeah, symbol. That's right. Yeah. Um, it, it is quite incredible. Um, I remember Andy Lewis telling me about how he did some of the stretching and morphing things in Scherzo, where he turns the children's toys into their voices. Um, and this was pre kind of uh, Paul stretch or, uh, you know, kind of audio morphing sort of things, but it was just painstaking. It was a bit like, like extruding something. So you, you kind of stretch a little bit and then you get stretch another bit and stretch another bit and then you keep getting it and then you, you kind of somehow layer them all together. And then eventually after two days, you'll turn <laughs> You know the sound of these bells into into one of his children, but now it it would take yeah ten seconds possibly as a as a, a render after you put you know sound A sound B morph them together over a period of twenty seconds um, press go and 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 just watch the thing go across and it takes ten seconds to do it. But the other thing is if 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 you don't if you don't like it you can just press delete or stick it in a yeah. stick it in a bin in a in a folder somewhere whereas in those days you you know if 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 you didn't like it god help you I mean, what you what are we going to do do you know in life it's yeah you, know, you just wish you could you, you could have a control z thing uh, <laughs> for, for everything in life don't you because you just got so used to it you think oh shit did i really send that email to that person um, by mistake and you just think I wish I could just undo that and wipe it off their memory <laughs> or the thing that you've just dropped on the floor and it's shattered to pieces oh I just control z that maybe maybe one day maybe they're working on it somewhere <laughs> Alexander does, which is uh, when he wants to work out how to do something, he, he, you know, and this is the other interesting thing, isn't it, that, you know, um, at least my son doesn't ask me how, how does this work or how does, how do you do this, he just goes on YouTube, yeah. types in a few search terms and then gets all these tutorials and then just, he's just, it's just how, uh, how, watching it, it's yeah. astonishing. How different is that from what we were doing Yeah. then, you know, now you you get something and you, you think, I want to know how this works. Instead of kind of painstakingly going through the manual or just guessing, you just go watch a couple of tutorials and it's, it's absolutely fantastic. And it's free. I can't get my head around it. It's, it's, and they it's know free. what they're talking about. No, the, no, it's, it's, it's been a real savior. And I mean, you know, to, 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 to touch upon uh, the theme that Mark wanted us to discuss, it's, uh, you know, of, of the internet and collaboration. Um, yeah. um, uh, Lee, Lee Ferguson, you know, the, the percussionist, uh, and Lee's been to Aberdeen, obviously, yeah. uh, times, and he, um, he and I have been um, um, meeting up once a week or once a fortnight to try out things and discuss things. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things we've been working on is he wants to do a, a virtual performance of uh, Xenakis's Safa. Oh, wow. So uh -huh. he, he, he wants to do it in a way where he performs, but rather than live streaming the sound, what he yeah. wants to do is he wants to do a MIDI version um, using the Mallet Cat and yeah. but have, but have the, 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 the MIDI instrument, the virtual MIDI instrument in the location in which it's being performed or where wherever it's being presented how is he going to get the idea of passing those um drum rolls around well this is the one of the, the things we, we were working on um because that's uh, about the how you you could probably do that in 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 ambisonics couldn't you or yeah, or, yeah that'd be really interesting well that's one of the things with one of the things we were working on and um for uh, so the, the 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 panning thing was interesting because um uh, again, no. Again, this 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 the business where once once upon a time, if you want to work that out, you'd have to go and do some serious bits of research and read. Oh yeah. 
read the read the textbooks, get the panning algorithm, and then try and get your head around how to implement this using Max or something something else. Yeah. But you know now all you do is you know well not all you one does, but you know you can you can go to Ableton Live and you can you can you can look at the their surround sound panel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. modified by taking it apart um, yeah. and um, uh, you know you, you start to get somewhere in terms yeah. of adapting it to, to do that job um, yeah. this was now it was uh, it was just after he'd created the piece it was trevor wishart's um encounters oh encounters yeah the that's Republic a of, glorious uh, piece glorious piece. piece really long it's like a it, it's it's an a, hour it's an isn't opera. It? Yeah. yeah it's it's an opera and yeah. i went to a presentation the performance presentation lecture presentation that trevor was doing at liverpool university yeah. um and um, so I, I just went along there um and um you know, it, it was still at a time when, um, um, for me to sit down and listen to a piece of acousmatic music uh, was, uh, well, not difficult, but it was something that I had to sort of focus on and, and um, uh, you know, really concentrate on. Um, I mean, I've, you know, a lot of the acousmatic pieces I'd listened to, um, I'd, I'd found not problematic, but because because of my perspective, you know, my, yeah. my mm -hmm. acousmatic, uh, out my perspective on the piece, I'd never really, uh, I'd found difficult latching onto it. But mm. I, I sat through and I listened to this piece and I hadn't noticed that an hour had gone by. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the and it's piece, beautiful when that happens, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it was fantastic.